All right, sermon number two. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was teaching about stewardship years ago. Stewardship is a fancy church word for taking care of what God entrusts to us. But in church, we have to have fancy words for stuff. So we have stewardship. Now, I was teaching about stewardship, about taking care of all that God entrusts to us and being faithful with it. And after the end of the conversation, a guy came up to me and kind of pulled me aside and said, Pastor, I don't understand. And I said, well, what, what don't you understand? And he said, I don't understand why you keep talking about God's stuff. He says, look, I work, I work hard, I've worked hard my whole life. When I work, I get paid. It's my money. I worked, I earned it. How can you call it God's stuff? It's my stuff. God didn't go to the office every day. And in a nutshell, this is the complication that we face as Christians in a world in which we work. The complication is that we have Matthew's gospel today. And if Jesus is clear about anything in our scripture today, it's about our accountability before God. Did you, did you allow those final words to the chief priests and Pharisees speak in your own heart? Listen, therefore I tell you, Jesus says. And when Jesus says, therefore, our ears kind of pick, perk up a little bit. Because when he says, therefore, it means, hey, here's the bottom line. This is important. Listen. Therefore, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who produce the fruit of the kingdom. There's this sense that a day is going to come when we get to tell God a story. And it's the story of our life. And it's the story of what we have done with what God has entrusted us. It's the story of the fruit that our lives have produced for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. You and I have the privilege Sunday of standing before God and telling God a story about how we've taken what God has entrusted to us and produced fruit, built up the kingdom of God. And so the challenge before us is a fundamental principle of stewardship, which is simply this. It is either God's stuff or our stuff. And there is no shades of gray. It's either God's stuff or our stuff. And there is no fudging on the question. Because until we can answer that question for ourselves, we're not going to be able to tell God the story at the end of our lives. Because we won't know how to tell it. It's either God's stuff or it's our stuff. In Genesis, in creation, in the first chapter, the sixth day, towards the end, God has created everything, the heavens, the earth already, the, the birds, the fish, the creatures, the plants, everything, and God creates humankind in God's image. And then God uses the language of the royal court, the way that the, the court and those in power and position look after and take care of the kingdom. He uses courtly language to suggest that for all of creation, that it too is placed under our privilege and care. God has made it all. And on the last day, after God has called us into being and breathed the, the Spirit into us to give us life, God entrusts to us 
all that God's hands have shaped and formed. It's all God's. God's hands have made it. God's breath has breathed life into that which breathes. The stars and the skies, the earth, it's God's. God, interestingly enough, entrusts this creation people like you and me. Later on in the scriptures, we find out that, that this privilege can be complicated. At their best, the people of God are like David. King David, at the end of his reign, he has united the tribes of Israel he has secured the borders of Israel. He has built the capital in Jerusalem, the mighty palaces. There is one project left to be done. And God has told King David that he's going to entrust this project to David's son, Solomon. Now, Solomon was young and inexperienced. And David knows how difficult it would be to build a house where God can place God's name. A house where God will dwell. So David, as one of the last acts, this is in Chronicles in the Old Testament, one of the last things that David does is he goes out and collects from the people of God all of the materials that will be needed for the construction of the house of the Lord. Everything from the hammers and nails to the most magnificent furnishings, he collects everything so that when Solomon has to build the temple, he won't have to bother with collecting the goods. What a good dad, huh, David? But David assembles the people after they've brought all the stuff together. And he speaks before them to God. Listen to what David says. Maybe this will help us wrestle with the question of whose stuff it is. David says this. David says, who am I? And what is my people that you have allowed us? He says this, that we should be able to make this free will offering. For all things come from you. All of this, Lord, all of your own, we have given you. All this abundance that we provide for the building of the house in which you're going to place your name, David says. All of this is your own. He says, Lord, you search our hearts and you know our uprightness. And you know in our heart that we freely offer these things freely and joyously to you. When we approach our gospel today, Jesus tells this parable about the vineyard and about the workers and about the owner and how the workers want to keep everything and they, they stone some of the emissaries, the slaves from the owner who want what's due to the owner, and they kill some of them, and then they kill some more, and then finally they kill his son. And Jesus then throws this therefore to them. And any time Jesus says therefore, our ears have to perk up, and we have to listen because it's important. Therefore, Jesus says, God will take away from you and give to those who produce the fruit of the kingdom. God will take away from you and give to those who produce the fruit of the kingdom. Someday, we are going to be privileged to stand before God and tell God a story. A story of what we have done with what God has entrusted us. 
and how we have used what God has entrusted us to deepen and further the very kingdom of God, our fruit, yours and mine. And to do that, we have to talk about what that is that God entrusts to us. I watch TV sometimes, and sometimes if I'm flicking through those religious channels, sometimes people are on those channels, and all they talk about is money and what's going to happen if you give them some. And if you give them some, God's going to give back to you. And I've seen preachers get up there and say, if you give me $79 today, tomorrow God's going to send you an envelope. And there's going to be 10 times as much in that envelope. Just call now with your credit card number. Operators are standing by. And we'll send you this free blessed cross as a gift. Special for you. We laugh. But you know what? Those people give us an excuse to think any time that we talk about money that we need to shut down and plug our ears because oh, that's all the church does and that's all sinful, dirty stuff. But it's not. It's not. If the scriptures didn't want us to talk about money, they wouldn't talk about money. And if everything is God's, then so's that. Because it's one way or the other. Either it's ours or God's, and there's no in-between. It can't be. Either all comes from God, or it's ours. And the story that we will tell before God will be shaped and formed by that belief. It has to be. It has to be. Pastor, the guy said, I don't know why you're talking about God's stuff. It's my money. I work. God did not come to the office every day for 30 years. The challenge we have, you and I, is in wrestling with this singular point today. Whose stuff is it? Because we are going to produce fruit in a different way if it's ours or if it's God's. What we do with it will very likely be different and how we go about doing it on which way we answer that question. So, what kind of story do you want to tell? When the day comes and we have to unfold before God the story of our life and we want to share with God what we have done with what we have had, whether that is in our own eyes, great or small, what we have done with what we have had, and we tell that tale to God, how will that story go? Amen.